Hey everyone, this is Disc Junkie standing here in the bright beautiful sun. Although it is actually winter, so it is not overly cold but it's a little bit cold. And I have this project which I've been thinking on about for quite a while. Uh, but it's actually an, a bit more of an indoor project. So I thought we would actually just step inside, leave the chickens out in the snow to do whatever the hell it is they're doing. So yeah, let's just uh, step inside and see what I got. And so here we are inside and today I thought we would take on this DIY parking disc project. And for those of you who don't know what a parking disc is, I'm just gonna show you this briefly. This is a really cheap variation of a parking disc. This is just made of cardboard and essentially how it works is that you have this little spinning disc and when you get to like a parking garage you will set it to the time that you arrive. So let's say you arrive at 2 o'clock and then you place it in your windshield and then when a parking inspector comes by he'll know that oh you parked at 2 o'clock. A lot of the time you know you will have a certain number of hours of free parking here in Sweden so this is a sort of a standard that people use. And you can obviously get more fancy variations of this that's you know somewhere in plastic and so but these are the more common ones. I mean these are these sort of things that everybody has and they're so boring but you still have to have them in your car. So I figured why not make a bit of a custom job to really create my own style of parking disc so I can have a parking disc that's actually cool looking and sort of sets my car apart from other cars. And you know, with my love of VHS and DVDs and movies, I suddenly thought, why not try to take a classic video cassette and turn it into a parking disc. I sort of had this idea just based on the fact that, you know, the actual disc, this is actually sort of the same size as the film hub or tape hub within the VHS. And in case you've never opened the VHS, I thought we would actually do this uh, right away. It's actually really simple to do. You just have to remove five screws. So you got one, two, three, four, and five. Like so. Once all of your screws are removed, and they're all the same size by the way, so you don't have to worry about mixing them up. Just set this down and just gently lift up the top portion. So this is what the interior looks like. It's got a bit of a sort of flexible metal piece there which essentially holds down these two reels of film. So yeah, this is essentially what you're looking at, in case you've never seen the interior of a VHS. Now what's cool about this is that down here you can see that these wheels have these little cogs on it. it means that when you turn this, it essentially clicks in and sort of locks it so it can't spin the other way. And in order to release this, there's actually a small hole on the back right there. And so if you push that in, it pushes on the piece of plastic here, sort of tilt this down. And then these two cogs sort of release the pressure, which means that the film can spin freely. I really like this idea about the cogs, and that's one of the things which sort of made me consider this as an, an, you know, an item to work with. Because sometimes when you get these parking discs and you get like the plastic variation, I've had these instances where these discs will be so loose you will set your time and then you whip it into the windshield and it's actually so loose that this spins freely and sort of upsets the time meaning you can accidentally get fined because you set the wrong time. So I don't want that to happen with this one and that's why I thought that maybe I should actually utilize these cogs because this will definitely you know lock the wheel in place to the point where it doesn't change the time. However just for simplicity's sake I'm gonna cut the tape and you might be wondering like why would I cut the film? Well the thing is that if I cut the film, then I will be able to spin this freely. It will be, you know, still be kind of locked in the position that I set it, but I will still be able to spin it with that whole sort of click and cog motion, so it'll stay in one place. I'm just gonna just remove the remove the film that's left. It's always more film than you think it's gonna be. You can release this essentially. There's a small locking mechanism right there, but I'm actually just going to cut it for a lot easier. Alright, so let's get this out of the way. Now I essentially have to get this disc. I sort of wanted to use the same disc because I want it to be visually very close to a regular parking disc. It's obviously because of just like aesthetics, I want it to look good, but also because you know I don't want to get in trouble into you know sort of making my own parking disc, like writing my own numbers and stuff. So I'm thinking, you know, yeah, maybe there is rules that essentially say like, you know, you have to have a parking disc, it has to look a certain way. So yeah, this is a little worn, it's a little old, but it still has the numbers on it. What I'm thinking is, 
want to essentially place this just over the old one. Now I'm not sure if it would be even cooler to actually have this be underneath. That way I will sort of see this whole sort of outline. Let me just try to check how this would sort of look. Well, regardless if I'm placing it on top or not, I suppose I could actually cut out a small portion in the center. I think this is essentially glued together. I'm trying to cut a straight line. See, then we're gonna try to cut a circle. Yeah, isn't this an exciting video? Check to see where we are size-wise. I'm actually gonna use the template. Let me just get something to draw with. Decided to go grab myself a uh, simple bottle cap. Go ahead and uh, try to draw a bit of a circle. Trying to be careful. I really don't want to accidentally draw on the rest of the uh, paper. There we go. Slide it into position without breaking it. it would be such a anti-climax. And uh, hmm. not a hundred percent sure. I mean, this whole thing does sort of slightly obstruct it, I guess. Yeah, it is nice, but it is a little bit obstructive. Take this out for a bit without breaking it. And I can turn it over and don't have to see that black line there. You know what? I think I'm actually gonna have it on the outside because it's actually simpler. When I put this on here, I'm gonna have to glue it down somehow. If I put it on the inside, then I should essentially have to glue it on the front, which will probably not look good. If I do this, then I can actually glue it on the back. Yeah, let's just uh, go ahead and glue this down. Clear glossy plastic, contact glue and paper. This thing is slipping all over the place. So I'll just leave that there for now. For the next portion of my little project, I wanted to get like this classic letter P on here. P for parking. And I realized that in my last video I made, I got these white window stickers from uh, Ram Mount. And there's not a P in here, but there's an R. And I figured that I might actually be able to turn this R into a P. It's not gonna be a perfect P because this particular font, it becomes uh, slightly slimmer. But I'm gonna try to cut it as good as I can. So there we might have our P. I'm not sure if I should like slim down the entire P. It's not looking too bad. Now we have to remove some of the extra space on this side. It's sort of hard to see. I think that's as perfect as I'm gonna get. Let's see what's the what's the front and back on this? Oh, it's actually like a decal, like a two-part process. I think that's sort of where we want to be. Because that actually helps me miss the little mark and rubbing this down on here. Go ahead and peel off the protective film. Da -da 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 -da. Wow, that's actually pretty nice. I mean, if you look at it from far, it's fucking awesome. Get some very minor imperfections. Might finish up with a knife later when I'm done. We'll see. Now we'll also want like a small arrow pointing upwards, like specifically marking the time. But first, I think I'm actually gonna just. Well, this seems to have actually gotten stuck there. It's not really moved down more. So that's great. What do you say? Maybe we try to actually close this up now just to see what it feels like. So. Wow, look at that. Just flipping this over. Reinsert all the screws. There we go. Turn the spool in the back. It's not overly practical, but it's not overly difficult either. Alright, so that's working nice. Now I essentially just need like a little marking. So wow, this is fucking awesome. I'm loving the look of this. I need to make a small arrow. And I think I'm actually just gonna continue by cutting some of the white plastic from this so I get sort of a coherent look. Yeah, let me just cut out an arrow and we'll see how it looks. That is pretty fucking perfect, look at that! So yeah... But I'm also thinking I want to add a label to the spine. And I've actually dug out a bunch of these old actual VHS labels which I found. I'll see some various examples right here. Not really sure what I'm gonna go for. It's sort of hard to decide. Maybe there's a different one. Let's see what we got here. The TCM of this is really poor. I think I'm actually gonna skip the yellow one. Oh, 
These ones are kind of nice. I mean, they got some color on them, but they're not overly expressive. Definitely got a better adhesive on it as well. I think I kind of like that. I actually dug out this old classic label maker. Oh, what the hell. I got a bad E on this. Ugh, it's so annoying. I made the whole thing and then I dropped the final E. Why is this not going well? God damn it. Ah, oh, fuck it, I'm tired. Let's just make the E. I can make the E. It's not a very good E. Right. So there we go. I think that's pretty decent. Oh yeah, we're gonna cut the imperfections of the P. Yeah. Okay. I think I'm actually gonna stop there before I ruin anything. So anyway, that is the parking cassette. So uh, yeah, let's just head on out to the Jeep and see how this looks. All right, so this is my windshield. Here is my parking cassette. Here's actually my old parking disc, just to give you some idea. This is a plastic variation. Get that out of the way. Get our new parking cassette in there. And uh, yeah, so when you want to use it, just grab this. It's like 12 o'clock. Split it into our windshield. Now I got this nice bar here from Vector Off Road. You can check my other videos for that. So obviously got a really good setup to use this. Might not be optimal for everyone else, but. Okay, that is fucking sick. I am absolutely loving it. Also loving how the P came out. You can definitely see it from far away, so... I mean, if the parking inspector comes by and finds me saying that, you know, I don't have a parking disc in my windshield, then I'm definitely... Uh, <laughs> definitely gonna fight the case on that. So that's it. I wanna say really big thank you for watching. Really hope you enjoyed this. It was a tremendously fun mod to make. If you do this yourself, leave comments and stuff. I would love to see what you come up with and how you do it. But that's it. Thank you very much for watching and as usual, hope to see you all next time.